Last night, in an address to the nation, Joe Biden called for particularly extreme gun control measures. One of the things he called for was ending the 72 hour release period when it comes to background checks. He called it a loophole, but that's not the case. Here's how it works. When you go to buy a gun, you have to get a background check. Oh, surprise, surprise. They keep saying they want background checks. Well, we have them. Now, they want expanded background checks, but let me explain how this is just a ploy to take your guns and ban you from having them. Joe Biden wants it to be that you cannot have a gun unless a background check is completed. But right now, the way it works is that if you fill out your background check form and the federal government does not complete it within 72 hours, it is released to you, meaning you, you, you get your gun. That is because it is on the government, not the individual. The government wants a background check and they cannot infringe upon your right to keep and bear arms. So if they don't do their background check, that's their problem. Now, Joe Biden and many of these liberals want expanded background checks, which includes essentially private sales, which are already particularly restricted and relatively rare. Here's what happens. You want to transfer a firearm to your son, to your spouse. Well, I don't know if you have to do it for your spouse, but say a brother, maybe someone who lives really close to you and you have a shared issue with maybe feral hogs or, or who knows what. You have to go to a certif- an FFL, a licensed dealer. You have to get a background check performed. And then Joe Biden wants to make it so the government doesn't have to perform the background check and doesn't have to release the weapon to you. If that, remo- if that 72 hour release period is, is gotten rid of, which Biden called a loophole, they could just be like, what's this? Mr. Smith, you want to buy a gun? Hmm. We'll get to your background check when we feel like it. A year goes by and they never finish your background check. But sorry, you can't have your gun until you get one. Now you're trying to transfer a weapon to your son or your brother. And they say, well, you got to go to the, uh, the FFL to fill out the form. And then they also don't complete the background check. Now, the way it works is increments. They're not going to do it overnight. They're not going to ban weapons like they're gone. They're going to do things like this where they know they can make these moves that make it increasingly more difficult to own weapons. And Joe Biden has the nerve to come out and say, like, like all rights, it's not absolute. Yeah, for the most part, I get what he's saying, right? We, 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 we need to understand what it means to have this right. And we need to understand what the limitations are on the interpretations, but not the right itself. Poorly phrased. The idea being you have free speech. And what that means is your ability to express yourself. But instructing or calling people to commit crimes is where we basically say we've got a line here. And you can actually step on that line to a certain degree. We see it all the time with prominent left wing uh, podcasters and Twitch streamers when they call for violence overtly, but then say in a video game and then they don't get feds kicking their door in. We'll see if the feds go after Ethan Klein, you know, honestly, because he did make some pretty absurd statements. But uh, let me tell you that with all of that being said, we are winning. And who are we? Those who believe in the right to keep and bear arms. It's, It's a weapon. What are weapons for? Causing harm. Yeah, that's it. That, that's what they do. Uh, you can use the gun for fun, target practice. But what is the function of a gun? To deliver at a high, very high rate of speed, a piece of mass, a large, dense, no, I shouldn't say large, but a dense piece of matter into a target to cause damage to that target. It certainly ain't fixing or helping uh, build things. I accept all of those things. People post on Twitter. They're like, guns are just for killing people. And I was like, congratulations. You looked up the definition of gun. It's not just for killing people, though, but some of them are. If you're going hunting, you're going you're gonna to use a larger uh, caliber round and you're not going to use as many. If you are defending yourself from enemies, both foreign and domestic, those are people. And you're probably going to be stocked up on like NATO rounds, nine millimeter, five, five, six or whatever, right? 308. They serve different purposes. Shotguns have different purposes. Yes, they're for for hurting people. The issue is we don't want you to aggress upon people. These weapons are to protect yourself and this country from enemies, both foreign and domestic. I say that and people on the left are like, what is what does a domestic enemy mean, Tim? And I'm like, dude, it means like a guy breaking into your house who's trying to like murder your family or something. It, it means rogue actors, just people who want to damage you or your property. 
It also means like, I don't know if a cop is breaking the law. It doesn't matter if they're a cop or a soldier or anyone working in the government. It means are they aggressing upon you in violation of the law? And just because it is a law doesn't mean it's legal either. We, we know how that goes with all the, the atrocities throughout history. The point is the people should have a comparable uh, defensive capabilities to agents of the state. That's it. Well, my friends, I bring you to the crux of this segment. Mr. David Hogg, with all of these things happening, I want to inform you that we're winning. And if you look right now, 36 states have permitless open carry. 36 states allow you to take a gun and walk around with it prominently displayed on your person. 25 states are constitutional carry, allowing you to conceal a weapon without a permit. Florida will soon be the 26th state, showing you that gun rights are winning. In fact, if you take a look since the 80s, I love this stat, by the way, the right to keep and bear arms has continually expanded. Now, there has been some pushback. We did have the assault weapons ban, which was relatively meaningless in the 90s. They don't know what an assault weapon is. We, met, we had the joke, thanks to Tyler Fisher. We were talking about Matt Walsh's What is a Woman documentary. And then I said, what is an assault weapon? And he said, that's the next documentary Daily Wire should do. And I was like, no, no, that one's ours. We're going to do that one. What is an assault weapon? It's actually a really good question because there is no definition. They might say it's a pistol grip, uh, a gun with a pistol grip. What does that matter? Just the pistol grip? Oh, it's, it's got a pistol grip and a foregrip and a, a retractable stock. And OK, for the longest time, these people have gotten stupid things banned. You can't have a short barreled rifle. But you can have a pistol with a brace. Yeah, Biden's not happy about that one. They, I love to bring this one up because it directly impacted me. The M1A, I think that's a 308 rifle. It might be a 7.62. They're, they're somewhat different, but eh, mostly interchangeable. Depending on who you ask, I guess. M1A is not allowed in Maryland, but the SCAR 20S is. And the SCAR 20S is a more modern variant of a, a similar caliber uh, uh, rifle. So it just makes no sense at all. You look at the things they actually get banned and they're like, you, you can't have a, a pistol grip. And it's like, OK, then we'll do a different grip. But the gun still exists. It's just meaningless garbage. And the reason for it is because of people like David Hogg. So when you see people like David Hogg, you can celebrate knowing that your opposition has no idea what they're talking about. And um, maybe maybe I should have gotten to this sooner because it's just a hilarious tweet. I'm sorry, man. David, come on. What are you doing, brother? David Hogg tweets. Non-Americans should not come here until our country does something about gun safety. Your kids are not safe here and neither are you. Please request that your government put out a travel advisory to your citizens, telling them it is not safe for citizens to visit the U.S. What? <laughs> Yo, David Hogg went full white nationalist. Natalist. I'm kidding, by the way. But to see David Hogg be like, non-Americans should not come to this country. It's like, dude, what? Bro, calm down. Mike Cernovich says, great points. Time to build a wall to protect others from this country. I remember, um, do you guys remember uh, rap news, the Juice rap news? They had a bunch of really great uh, uh, rap, uh, rap, political rap songs, you know, 10 years ago. And one of them was about protests in the U.S. And one of the bits they did was that building, the, building a wall, and this is pre-Trump, was uh, to keep was not to keep immigrants out. It's to keep Americans in. That was the joke they made, securing the border at least. But uh, sure, okay. I just love the responses to this. Someone mentioned it is affecting tourism. Many of us in Canada are not crossing over like we used to. <laughs> okay. Way ahead of you. My husband and I have actively made the choice not to travel to the USA since February 2017. Okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> Scott Pressler says David Hogg is advocating for a wall progress. Yo, I just don't even know. What are you arguing for at this point? Here's another tweet from David Hogg. He says, I woke up with a message on Twitter from someone asking how to turn in their AR-15. This time is different. Yo, when the opposition to your rights are this unhinged, you don't really have all that much to worry about, but maybe that's the trick. You see, you sit here and you look at David Hogg and you're laughing, saying, like, how could we possibly lose with opposition like this? Aha, wait. David Hogg is a mastermind. He has read the art of war, learning from the great Sun Tzu. You see, what he's doing is making you think he's weak. 
so that you are lulled into a false sense of security. Meanwhile, behind the scenes, he's working very hard to enact real gun control policy. I'm joking, by the way, but the point remains uh, uh, apt. Do not underestimate a large horde of angry, stupid people. They don't know why they want guns banned. They don't know what about them should be banned. They don't know anything about them, yet they're telling you how to regulate them. And so that's why I bring up the M1A SCAR 20S thing fairly often. And it's because they, they let, let, me, let me put it this way. So uh, I own a, a Benelli semi-automatic shotgun. Now, I live in West Virginia, so I don't have these things in Maryland where we do a lot of our work, which is dumb. I'm hoping the Supreme Court issues a broad ruling in this upcoming case that just makes constitutional carry nationwide. That would be the coolest thing ever. But I have a Benelli. A, uh, it, it can hold, I think, six shells and uh, it's semi-auto. It is, it is a great weapon. It's got a pistol grip and you just hold it and you load it and you can go boom, 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 just very, very quickly. Personally, I don't see why the semi-auto function of it is it matters. I also own a KSG uh, 25. I think it's what I, I think I'm getting it right. And that is a dual magazine tube pump action shotgun with a pistol grip. It can hold 25 shells. If you're using mini shells, maybe like with slugs, it can hold, I think, 41. And that one can go boom, boom, boom. And you can fire it very, very quickly. Because it is pump action, it is legal in Maryland. And the Benelli, because it's semi-auto, it is not. It's a combination of the semi-auto and the pistol grip. If you get rid of that and have like a rifle grip, then it's uh, legal, I guess, to have semi-auto. I don't, I don't know for sure. The rules are particularly complicated. But Maryland has a big list of all of the guns individually they've banned, and the KSG is not one of them. Why does it make sense? Why, why, why does it, do they think it makes sense to ban the semi-auto that can hold six, but not the pump action that can hold 25? Because they have no idea what they're talking about. So you know what? Fine. We're going to keep winning on constitutional carry grounds. And when these things keep happening, then we're going to expand gun rights nationwide more and more and more. And we are. And they'll ban things that make us, I don't know, that are irksome. Suppressors under the NFA is really dumb because these people watch movies and they see people with screwing the silencer onto the weapon and then going pew, pew, pew. Pew, pew, pew. That's what it, that's what they do. That, that's what it goes in. The, that's how it goes in the movies. And that's not how it actually works in real life. Although there are some really great suppressors, there are also guns that are suppressed and those aren't allowed. They ban those things and you're like, all that does is make the weapon safer. You're in your home. Someone kicks in the door using a weapon. It's, you're going to hurt your ears. You got to put on ear protection. Suppressors can help. It's still extremely loud, but they have no idea what they're talking about. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why you shouldn't trust the government. I went to Mount Carmel recently, the Waco massacre site. Yeah, women and children were gassed to death. The government, like any organization, can and cannot be trustworthy depending on the circumstances. There's a reason why the founding fathers enshrined constitutional rights. When it comes to big business, a corporation can do bad. I think Nestle is a pretty bad company. I think Nestle exploits, you know, the rights of landowners and small communities to take water. And there's a whole lot of problems with what they do. That's just my opinion. Uh, I could be wrong about a lot of the Nestle stuff, but, you know, based on what I've seen, I'm not a, you know, there's a lot of companies that just do wrong. Well, when they do wrong, we can hold them accountable. We do have government. And for this, I actually like government. I'm not saying I overwhelmingly like government. I'm saying there are some things a reasonable person can conclude. Not all bad. I am not a, a hardcore libertarian ANCAP anarchist or anything like that, but I do lean very libertarian on a lot of issues. I recognize that when the people come together, and form a governing body with a set of rules, it's not always bad. We can then say, you are using public commons. You are using the commons, our waterways. We don't want you dumping trash into it. So we come to that agreement. I disagree with um, the ANCAPs and the libertarian types on this. They think it'd be, it can be easily privately regulated, you know, privately controlled. And I'm just like, you get people who exploit. You know, we, we, we should have some ground rules. I'm okay with that, but limited. Because here's the issue. We come together as a community and we tell these big companies, stop exploiting our resources. That's just that's causing us harm that I'm OK with. But eventually, who comes together to stop the government from infringing upon the rights of the individual and the private entity? 
It's one thing when we all agree, hey, they dumped toxic waste in our water supply. That's bad. We need to stop them. It's another thing when the government, uh, I'll shout out to Seamus of Freedom Tunes. He, does, he makes a good one, a good point. In one of his first cartoons he's ever done, it's a uh, social contract man. And, and the guy's like, what do you do? And he's like, I buy things that you didn't buy with your money. And the guy's like, well, that doesn't sound good. And then he's like, hey, what are you doing? And he's like, I fixed your car because I noticed your car was broken. And he goes, oh, oh, well, that's actually kind of nice. OK, thank you. And he's like, now I'm repairing your roof because your roof was broken. And he goes, oh, OK, that's not so bad. Like, there's some good stuff there. And then the guy goes, I also noticed you don't have any cats. So I bought you a thousand bags of kitty litter. And he goes, wait, what? Why are you doing that? And he goes, and it's your money buying it. And he's like, why? And he goes, well, it is my best friend who owns the kitty litter factory. And there it is. What happens when the government is corrupt? How do you deal with that? The problem is government has a monopoly on violence. And so when the government begins doing the bad things, you can't get another group of people to go to government and be like, we want to strict this because that is what government was supposed to be. The founding fathers said, we're going to have a, uh, a regis of grievances. Yeah, well, what happens when the government also does not respect your redress of grievances. You've got a problem. Government tyranny, it happens. So what can you do? Well, personally, I think we are nowhere near that point. I really do. I think we have corrupt government. I think you can take a look at like Waco and Ruby Ridge and be like, yeah, these people went nuts. The corruption exists. But guess what? As much as a lot of people don't want to believe it, we clearly saw with Donald Trump that voting actually works. That's the crazy thing. People were, were disenfranchised and this is demoralized. And this is what they want from you. They want you to believe that you cannot do anything. They want you to be violent so they can justify their use of force against you. No, you don't need violence. Maybe when we get to a point where like, I don't know, the government is rounding people up on train cars and bringing them to camps. Maybe then we can have a conversation about how you stop slavery and mass executions or whatever. But we're nowhere near that point. The point we're at right now is we have a corrupt government. What do we do? Donald Trump got in. The left lost their mind because they're, I mean, for the most part, brainwashed by the mainstream media, the corporate press. Donald Trump was not some Superman or savior, but he does show that if the people do decide, they can have a big impact. We also see people like Marjorie Taylor Greene and Thomas Massey. People can resist. And Rand Paul, for instance, here's what I'm saying. They want you to believe you're powerless, but the power lies in changing culture. They can't stop that. Now, here's why it's important to have guns, even though I'm outright saying violence is not going to be effective. What is effective is the ability to defend yourself from enemies, both foreign and domestic. And that means if anyone wants to violate your rights, you have the ability to say no. Why is it that the government doesn't kick your door in and raid your house? Why is it that they knock? Now, sometimes they do kick your door in. There was a man who was shot and killed. It was disgusting. Cops, they, they breached the door. They had a key and they start yelling. Ah, and within less than 30 seconds, there's a guy sleeping on the couch. They shot and killed him. That's psychotic. And they shot and killed him. There. He's got a gun. That's crazy, man. But take, I, always, I always reference the Brenda Taylor story. The cops bang on the door. They say they announce themselves. They breach the door. In the hallway, Brenda Taylor's boyfriend opens fire on them, striking an officer on the leg, nearly killing him. I'm glad the dude's all right. We actually had him on the show. Scary story. But the cops understand that in this country, the people have a right to keep and bear arms, which means they cannot just kick your door in and throw you on a train car and drag you away. That is the point. Not that a citizen is going to, there's going to be a militia that rises up and challenges the government or anything like that. No, the government can strike those down very easily. The issue is that when it comes to enforcing the law, they have to be careful and respect the people because people have a right to defend themselves. This is a restriction on government and it's effective today. If we're going to affect real change, it, it's simple. Culture, teaching kids. This is the most important thing. I do not believe there will be a circumstance where you know, right now, like in any, even in 10 or 20 years, the people are going to all take up their guns and then form a militia and then be like, or anything like that. I believe if we see civil war, it's going to be factional violence and the government will be attempting to stop it. It's not going to be like North versus South or whatever. It's going to be political. It's going to be very strange. 
But right now, the government knows that if they want to enforce the law, they have to respect you and due process. And that is a good thing. Because if they don't, people might be armed and in their homes. They can't just kick your door and violate your rights. They got to get a warrant and they have to be very careful about it. Now, with this comes the downside. Bad people do bad things. And this is where we ask government to please use the law to protect us. And Uvalde, they did not do it. And that's the problem. The government exists. They have guns. Okay, guys, when someone breaks the law, please stop them. That's what we want, right? The Uvalde should stop him. That's what we expect of you. But they didn't do it. They did not do it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. CBP did. But the local police did not. If they're not going to do what we ask them to do with the right to wield violence, then what what are we getting out of them anyway? Look, in the end, David Hogg has no idea what he's talking about. He wants to ward ward off immigrants. What? I'm pro immigration. I think let everybody come. Every single person in the world can migrate to this country through the process. That way we can make sure we, re, we retain our values, we share our values, and um, I like the idea that people want to be here more than any, anywhere else, and they want to live under our umbrella of influence. But that means there's going to be a process by which you do it. You got to apply. Illegal immigration is bad for this country. I think that we need, we need to, to explain to people better why we have these rights. And people like David Hogg and these other gun control advocates have, advocates have no idea what they're talking about. So you know what? Fine, whatever. I'll keep arguing for why we should have guns. And um, I'll explain to people like David Hogg, they're ineffective. They're losing. Keep trying, Joe Biden. It ain't going to work. It's not. We're winning. And it's thanks to you guys. It's thanks to everyone. And it's thanks to us having these conversations and explaining. I think things have gone fairly well in this country for a long time. We've in- increasingly expanded the rights of the marginalized. That's fantastic. Um, we've expanded the rights of the, indiv- of, the, of the people to keep and bear arms in many ways. Not completely. It's been restricted in many ways. The NFA, for instance. But I think we're doing better. So good. Good. Keep up the good fight. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.